Yeah, we back. Yeah, we back. Now, this video is going to be a follow-up video to the one I did on the Sade Robinson case. And towards the end of my last video, I had mentioned that I've been noticing certain trends uh, over the past year. Uh, certain crimes that, for whatever reason, it could be a coincidence, but they are very similar in their execution. And... Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to put it out there, man, because, hey, I don't got the biggest platform, but due to the fact that we have so-called black media platforms that don't want to bring these things to the light, you know, I guess I'll take it upon myself to uh, launch the discussion. In my last video, I had mentioned that the Sade Robinson case was very similar to a case that I seen last September in Maryland, where you had a a school teacher in her 50s who disappeared on her evening walk. And then a few weeks later, her headless corpse with no arms and no legs popped up, washed up by the lake. And then with the Sade Robinson case, we have this young lady right here who her headless corpse popped up by Lake Michigan. And now we have another case coming out of Louisiana, I believe. Uh, another 19 year old young lady, her headless corpse popping up by a river somewhere in Louisiana. All of these cases happening within months of each other actually now this could be you know a great coincidence a grand coincidence it just so happened that um three unlucky women come across three random men who within the first day of meeting them they decide to take their life and chop up their body and dump the remains in a body of water that could just be a, a random coincidence but to me i just something bothers me in my spirit i just don't think that it's a coincidence especially with the amount of black women that go missing uh, in the United States. Like I've mentioned before in my last videos, I keep track of our people that go missing in the United States. I, I look at the missing posters. Um, in fact, just today I seen a missing poster for a young lady, 15 years old, and it said that she was lured away from her home by somebody online. So she's currently missing. And hopefully in that case, hopefully she comes back. You know, hopefully everything works out in the family's favor. But keep in mind, black women are only about what? six percent five six seven percent of the united states population but they make up one third of all missing women in the united states so over 30 percent of the missing women are black women and girls but they they're not even 10 percent of the population now i'm not a mathematician by profession but to me that's a crazy stat that's a crazy stat and i'm gonna ring the alarm on that today with this video and we're gonna look at some cases over the past year i'm not gonna go back you know years back i'm gonna go back to things that happened within the last calendar year and these are only the cases that have been solved we're not even talking about the ones that are still open the women that are still missing we're not even gonna talk about that because we don't even know what's going on with that i'm only gonna talk about the cases that have been solved now i named the video are white nationalists targeting certain victims to earn stripes and the reason why I say earn stripes is because in my last video, I used the example of the mass shooters, like the mass shooters going back to Dylan Roof and the Buffalo shooting and the Jacksonville shooting and the various mass shootings against our people that have happened. And what you notice in those crimes is that they are very similar in their execution, right? You got a crazy radicalized lunatic come in a public space with military equipment and just starts letting off rounds against our people start shooting at our people and he leaves behind a manifesto and usually what happens in these certain i guess i don't know how to call them these white nationalist circles those men are seen as heroes are seen as martyrs they're seen as you know they earn their stripes in that community and that usually inspires the next guy to come up and do the same exact thing now like i said this could be a grand coincidence right where three women could have met their demise in the same exact manner and their bodies were disposed in the same exact manner who knows i don't know to me it almost seems ritualistic in a way but anyways um let's get into it let's take a look at the most recent development coming out of i believe louisiana where this young lady also 19 years old lost her life in a similar way to Shadé robinson take a look up on the screen a missing louisiana teen's body is found dismembered in a river by a man she met online who has been charged with murder. Now, this case is identical to the Sade Robinson case. It is identical. A young lady meets a man online 
a man who looks like he lives in a dumpster, you know, a man who looks like, you know, he lives in the great outdoors, you know, somebody who looks like he's been camping out in the back streets. But for whatever reason, she decides to meet this man for whatever reason, whatever. Right. And then within hours of meeting this man, her limbs and her head are removed from her body and she is dumped in a body of water. Now, the case with the teacher in Maryland is a little bit more sinister because she was somebody who was known in her community. She was uh, I believe she was a Muslim woman. She taught French to young children. She seemed to be a beloved member of the community, and she was always known to take her evening walks in the park. Right. And one night she never came back from her evening walk. And they also found her her torso in a body of water with no arms, no legs and no head. I don't understand it. But anyways, let's get into this story with this young lady in Louisiana. A woman 19 years old goes to meet a man 29 years old after striking up romance online only for him to murder her and chop her body up before throwing her in the river. The torso of Cheryl Turner, 19, was found dumped in the Louisiana River back in January. Now, like I said, she was missing back in, you know, top of the year. Right. We never heard of it. Right. She was missing for a little while. And we are just now, you know, the police are finally now in April, almost May, finally gathering evidence to bring somebody to justice. So now keep in mind, imagine all the, all the young girls and the women that go missing that we just never hear from again, bro. You know, no leads, no developments, no nothing. Because logically, how can you really track somebody or bring somebody to justice if the victim has no connection to the assassin, right? If you just met somebody and within hours, they take your life and dump you in the river, what information does the police have to go on to really find the person? Usually they might go investigate somebody close to you, but these guys probably get away with a lot because they have no connection to the victim at all. Now, you know, thank the ancestors for technology and advancements in science, so they can't really get away with it as easily, but still it's hard to investigate when there's no connection between the victim and the assassin. Now let's continue. A West Monroe man admits to killing and dismembering a new Iberia woman found in the Wachita River. I could be pronouncing it wrong. I believe it's the Wachita River. Let's continue. On April 19th, 2024, detectives of the West Monroe Police Department were assigned to the homicide investigation. During the investigation, authorities learned that the victim engaged in a relationship with Anthony Pierce Holland Jr. of West Monroe, Louisiana. The victim and Holland exchanged messages that mentioned Holland picking up the victim from New Iberia. Now, for my subscribers that from Louisiana, y'all let me know because I've seen some discussion online. I'm hearing that, you know, West Monroe is one of those like, you know, that's one of them KKK strongholds. So y'all let me know if that's accurate, because I've heard that area, at least in the past, was that's one of them strongholds, you know, of the enemy right there. You know, the enemy for centuries uh you know yeah them, them confederate boys that's one of their strongholds that's what that's what i've been told y'all let me know if that's accurate or not you know i'm an outsider but that's that's what i'm hearing though i'm hearing that west monroe you could still see the confederate flag the kkk flag you know they have a long history going back decades and centuries of violence against our people so y'all let me know get in the comment section if you're from louisiana and you're familiar with west monroe that whole area y'all let me know because that's what i'm hearing that's what i'm hearing now let's continue According to court documents, detectives learned that Holland made contact with the victim on January 1st and picked her up from her mother's residence in a black 2023 Toyota Corolla. Holland then returned to Wachita Parish with the victim. Phone records show the victim's phone stopped transmitting on January 2nd. That's the same exact thing with the Shadi Robinson case, right? On April 1st, the night of April 1st, she met up with the dude and on April 2nd, her phone stopped transmitting. Her phone went dead and never turned back on. Same exact cape, same exact execution, bro. Identical, literally no difference at all, bro. Start to finish, the whole scenario, same exact. It could be a grand coincidence, but I ain't buying it. Let's continue. During the investigation, Holland's vehicle was seen on traffic cameras in an area near the location where the body was found four days before the discovery of the victim's remains. Same exact thing with the Shadi Robinson case, man. The vehicle was caught on surveillance around the area where the body was found. Let's continue. According to court documents, medical examiners confirmed that the duration of time in which the remains were in the river was consistent with the time frame when Holland's vehicle was seen on the traffic cameras. The autopsy report indicated that the victim was sexually assaulted by Holland and her neck was broken. On April 23rd, 2024, 
Howling was located by West Monroe police and taken into custody for an interview. Howland also allegedly admitted that he killed the victim inside his apartment during a sex act. After Howland realized the victim was deceased, he reportedly dismembered the victim with a large kitchen knife. Howland allegedly placed the victim's remains in plastic bags in a duffel bag, driving the remains to a body of water that feeds into the river. He allegedly disposed of the knives that he used to dismember the victim and the victim's property. Now, now keep in mind, an article came out in the New York Post about the Sade Robinson case. They said the assassin in that case had a so-called um, sex dungeon in his basement, you know, with handcuffs and restraints and all type of weirdo type shit going on in there. And um, to me, it just seems like, you know, these guys just have these random tools hanging around so they could just dismember a human body in a moment's notice. I'm just not buying it, bro. I'm just not buying it. Like, like the dude in the Shadi Robinson case, he just happened to have, you know, knives and gas cans hanging around to set the car on fire and to dispose of the victim's property and dismember the victim and chop off the arms and the head and the legs and dump it in the river. It just seems like a grand coincidence, man. To me, it seems like some type of weird ritualistic type of thing, bro. And for those of us who study our history, these things are not new. These things are not new. This demographic of men doing this to this demographic of women is not new. It's been happening going all the way back to the colonial period. It's not new. It's not new. It was happening back in the 1600s, the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s. It's still happening right now. It's still happening right now. You know, when you don't understand your history, these things seem to, you know, blow you away. But when you understand your history and you study your history, you see that this has happened before many a times. And, you know, these ritualistic type of murders, it's nothing new for this demographic of men, especially against this demographic of women. Now, let's continue. Now, before I move on to the next case, I want to go back to the teacher back in Maryland uh, last September who also met her demise in a similar way. But nobody really knows the connection she had to the man that took her life the police said that she never came across that man before that day when she was abducted in the park she never met that man she had no connection to that man there was no communication between her and that man right they never texted never spoke on the phone she came across that man on her evening walk in the park how did he manage to get her back to the house and chop her body up nobody knows man nobody knows i've been trying to keep up with that case ever since it happened but i cannot find any recent articles after september like after september nobody been reporting on it nobody been following up with it so i can't really tell you any recent developments in that case man it just seems really weird it just seems so brazen and random you know um a beautiful you know one of our elders a teacher a beloved member of the community goes on an evening walk in the park and then she pops up with no head and no arms and no legs washing up by, on a lake you know what i mean nobody knows bro it's um it's sad you know it, it's sad like when that story when that story broke man I, I was sad for a few days you know a few days i was like i was in a bad mood you know but uh let's continue man i want to jump into this next case um it's not really similar to this one because thankfully this young girl actually was able to make it back home to her family you know shout out to the police who kept up and followed up and did their investigation and found where she was at but she was also missing for weeks you know i keep i keep track of all the missing girls i keep track of all our people that's missing bro so this girl right here she was missing for some weeks they seen her on surveillance leaving school one day and she was never seen again she vanished and then she popped up like weeks later at this dude's house this weirdo looking dude now keep in mind all these dudes look like weirdos all these dudes look like bozos right now that's not to say that if a guy looks clean cut he looks normal and she don't got nothing to worry about i'm not saying that but these guys look just overtly repulsive in their physical appearance and that's why in the case of Shadé robinson and the young girl from louisiana i think it was some outside influences that might have swayed their decision making you know because it couldn't have been the physical appearance it couldn't have been the physical attraction and that's why i had named that one video the deadly consequences of divestor propaganda when you pedestalize a certain group of men for no reason except self-hate and inferiority you end up attaching yourself to these weird characters man that look like they fresh out of a fucking dumpster looking like their private residence is the local dumpster that's what happens man you know that's what happens and unfortunately due to the proliferation of certain propaganda on social media a lot of our young girls are going off and linking up with all type of weird characters, man, that are taking advantage of their naivete, you know, taking advantage of them being victims of propaganda. A bunch of men who would have no chance with the women of their own community. 
but they could come to the black community and they could do their thing because you have other women in the community telling these young girls girl you better get your white man girl you better get your white man how else would you explain a young 14 15 year old girl leaving school to go run off with this creep looking weirdo had to be a victim of propaganda let's continue ashley bell the 14 year old parkview high school student who had been missing since the last day of school on may 24th has been found and reunited with her family now like i told you man our women and girls stay going missing all the time man all the time so the last day of school she said i'm gonna go run off with this white man you know you already know man at that age they on TikTok all day. They on YouTube all day. They on social media all day. Listening to all these other goofy ass chicks. Oh man, the white man, the white man, the white. I guarantee that's what it was. I guarantee with Shadé Robinson. I guarantee that's what it was. I guarantee with this lady down in Louisiana, Cheryl Return. I guarantee that's what it was. I guarantee that's what it was. You ain't gonna tell me these dudes was some fly dudes. These were some fresh dudes. These were some charismatic type. But no, 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 no. These were victims of propaganda. The consequences of divest of propaganda. Let's continue. Ashley Bell was at home with a 41-year-old man named Russell Cheeves. Cheeves has been charged with enticing a child for indecent purposes and interference with custody. He is in Clayton County Jail in connection with crimes that are alleged to have happened at the home. So basically, police said that he was, you know, he had her shacked up at the house for a month straight doing whatever he wanted. Anyway, let's continue. Let's jump into this other case that happened in Kansas City, I believe, last year. I don't know if y'all heard about it probably not because nobody hears about any of these cases for whatever reason a gentleman by the name of timothy hazlitt who is facing multiple life sentences for keeping black women locked up and chained up in the dungeon in his basement and one managed to escape and one ended up in the river inside a barrel uh i did a video on it a while back let's uh take a look at it man it's crazy man it's crazy the woman who has not been named said she escaped when Hazlitt left the house to take his child to school and then ran to a neighbor's home for help. In January, the Excelsior Springs Police Department said it was looking for 36-year-old Janie Crosdale as a potential witness in the case. So apparently, this dude had a young 22-year-old black woman locked up in his basement for a month straight. Uh, you know, I don't know how he managed to pull that off. Um, and then apparently there was another lady locked in the basement, um, Janie Crosdale, and her remains were found in a body of water, coincidentally. And it's weird because in the Shadé Robertson case, they said he also had a, a dungeon in his basement with handcuffs and all type of equipment in his basement also. So that's one similarity in this case. Um, I don't know what's going on, man, but uh, let's continue. Authorities were looking for Janie Crosdale in connection with the criminal case against Timothy Hazlitt, who faces nine felonies for allegedly beating, assaulting, and holding a 22-year-old black woman captive. The woman, identified as TJ, I'm assuming those are her initials, escaped last October after being held for more than a month and told police that more women might have been victimized by Hazlitt. Hazlitt pleaded not guilty and is now being held under $3 million bond. Now, as you can see, the missing persons billboard for Jenny Crosdale, you know, like I said, black women only make up less than 10% of the American population, but they make up over one third of the missing persons population. Uh, it's a crazy stat. It's a crazy stat. Now, this billboard was put up before they found her remains in the river. But like I said, man, um, it's very alarming. Like I said, even just today, I seen a missing poster for a young girl 15 16 years old and they said that the only only evidence they got right now is they believe she was lured out of her home by somebody online so you know it's um that's a story I'm, i've been hearing a lot in these cases man a lot you know monitor your children's social media man that's all i can say monitor your children's social media make sure they're not ingesting any propaganda make sure they're not speaking to any nefarious characters you gotta stay on top of things man let's continue Janie crosdale's story points to a larger more urgent issue missing black women more than 24 percent of missing persons in jackson county are black women according to the missouri state patrol database nationally a third of missing women are black even though they make up less than 15 percent of the population really they make up less than 10 percent of the population really they make up about five to six percent of the population that we're being honest you know they're a fraction of the population but a large chunk of the missing persons population now let's continue 
Janie Crosdale's remains were found in a blue barrel in the Missouri River on June 24th when two kayakers reported it to the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Now, it's very odd. One thing I'll say in these cases, when these remains are found, they're never found by the police. The police are obviously never conducting a thorough investigation for whatever reason. Um, Shade Robinson's remains were found by people just walking along the beach. Um, the lady in Louisiana, her remains were found by somebody just, you know, just walking, walking on by in the water. You know, this lady's remains found by some random kayakers. Um, you know, the lady in Maryland, her remains were found by just somebody who just happened to be in the area. Just come across a torso. Um, for whatever reason, man, the police, I don't know, man. Police sound like they bullshit to me. Police sound like they on some bullshit. Um, police on bullshit. All these missing women, you, you don't got no investigation, no leads, no nothing, man. Police on bullshit. You know, taking taxes out of my check and you ain't, you ain't even doing your fucking job, man. You want some bullshit. Talking about you protecting the server. You ain't protecting the server, nothing, nigga. Anyways, man. It's your boy Nefakari. That's Celine back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash app up on the screen. And I'm gone. Peace.